Probably the scariest thing for any police officer is their partner down after being shot. Today's officer handles her business. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. As always, I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Santa Ana, California. Today's video is sponsored by Backstreet Surveillance, Active Self Protection's trusted source for home and business surveillance. They offer free expert system design and quotes using their Backstreet Surveillance system design tool to help you build the perfect system for your application. They also offer nationwide professional installation, remote smartphone monitoring, and their revolutionary 364K camera to help you keep track of and protect that which you love. Check them out at the link in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. This one begins with a woman calling 911 because a guy's been following her on the freeway and then she got off the freeway, he followed her, she made a bunch of turns, he kept following her. Called 911 eventually because this guy is following her and creeping her out, so they tell her to go to the police precinct. She does pull up in front of the police precinct. The guy following her pulls up as well and then walks up to the front door of the precinct. This officer is about to make contact with him and we have his badge cam audio. Let's listen in. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. What's going on here? Uh, I'm just seeing somebody right now. Okay. Are you uh, obsessed with these cars? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, they'll get you in a sec, okay? Alright. Okay. Hey, 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 hey! Okay? No! Fuck! You okay? Where are you hit? Where are you hit? On the chest, fuck! Okay, you're okay. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. 1033, suspect is down. I've got an officer down. We need help. Okay, you're okay. We have a surveillance footage from the front of the precinct as well as the officer comes up, makes contact with him, talks to him for a minute. Now what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see as the officer turns and walks away from him, the guy is going to then pull his firearm out from under his shirt after the officer walks off. Uh, gonna grab his gun and then go to work and shoot the officer twice, unfortunate, well shot at him twice, hit him once under his vest. The other officer drew her pistol, shot him four times, including once in the head. We have her badge cam as well. It's on the buffer. She didn't activate her camera for a little while and actually didn't activate the camera until after she had taken the shot. So the only uh, actual view we have of the shots was from the officer who ended up being shot. Now she said, she's gonna say, where are you shot? And he shot in the chest. It's actually gotten through his vest or gone under his vest. We do have some audio from her. Let's listen in. Drop the gun now! Suspect, drop the gun! Suspect, drop the gun or I'll shoot you again! Drop the gun or I will shoot you again! Drop the gun! Of the female officers, four shots that she fired, one of them entered his uh, cranial cavity and instantly shut him off, as you saw. He obviously did not make it. Thankfully, the other officers were able to get there for the shot officer, get him to uh, the hospital in time. He is expected to make a full recovery. And the woman who was the source of the original call was unharmed. Oh man, we got some thoughts on this one. Uh, I mean, pretty serious stuff. The Marksmanship Challenge, hi, can't tell you enough. Go over to Active Self Protection Extra or even better, the Active Self Protection Unlimited app. Links are in the description. All the benefits of the app come to you and no ads and all the videos from here. Go check it out.
Obviously, Mike, when this kind of call goes out, we've got somebody who's following somebody that sounds like a road rage or, or maybe some kind of weird stalking thing. But as an officer, you're coming to this, I think, with your spidey senses tingling. For sure, John. You know, I, I don't know if they had time. I don't know how much time uh, elapsed between when this, uh, this young lady called 911 and they arrived at the station. But um, just a suggestion. I'm not saying anyone did anything wrong, but maybe have an officer or two out front waiting when she gets there to get her inside and separate her from this guy. But um, this is a definitely a situation where you've got a, an unknown quantity who's following someone for unknown reasons. So yeah, definitely definitely have your spidey senses tingling and, and expect anything that might happen in, in the next few minutes. I, I also think, okay, so he contacts the guy, hey, wait a minute, sir, is this your car? You, you can see the door, the, the driver's side door to his car is actually open. And the officer is turned away from the guy. And, and listen, if we have an unknown contact, somebody though that we know is a potential problem, I, I obviously turning your back on him here turned out to be a very terrible decision. And I, and I hate to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, second guess too badly, but, but obviously this is why we generally recommend we don't turn our backs on unknown contacts, particularly in law enforcement encounters. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm sure no one, no one believes that more than the officer who was shot. Um, this is something that, you know, I'm not saying he's complacent. I'm not throwing any shade at this guy whatsoever. But this is something that after long enough, when you've had enough of these contacts that, you know, you haven't been shot at, that you start to get a little bit complacent potentially and turn your back. What I would have liked to have seen here was for him to get that guy, say, hey, come on over here on the curb behind this lady's car or by the squad car, sit him down on the curb, have him cross his ankles, and put him in a position of disadvantage so he can't do anything like this. Yeah, and, and this is why, right? Hey, wait a minute, sir, I need you to come here, and, and I, you know, I need to talk to you. What's your name? What's going on here? Because obviously what ends up happening is the guy just pulls a gun at random and shoots at this officer. And, and of course, I want to say here for police officers, you got to recognize your mission means that your gunfights start differently than private citizen gunfights. So the contact is initiated by the officer. The gunfight though is initiated by the perp. And as an officer, listen, you know, I say to private citizens all the time, don't draw from the drop. As an officer here, he's actively shooting at you. You have to draw from the drop here. You have to get your gun in the fight. Even though he's gonna get the first couple shots, even though one of them is going to be a hit, you have to get your gun in the fight and get to work. Yeah, I concur. And, you know, there's going to be times when you're absolutely caught off guard. You know, there was there was an officer in San Diego when I worked there, Jeremy Henwood, uh, rest in peace. Um, he was just sitting in a light, you know, minding his own business. And it was someone who uh, had been being pursued by another agency. Um, that agency called that pursuit off because it was necessarily extremely dangerous. And this guy pulled off on a surface street and pulled up next to this officer, assumed he was after him, even though this officer was completely unaware of the situation and shot him with a shotgun. So you're not always going to have uh, a heads up. You're not always going to know ahead of time what's about to, to happen. And this officer is no exception. Now, uh, let's talk about the phone. This is, was very strange to me. Uh, and you and I talked about this, John. Why would he be on his phone? Any number of reasons. Maybe his radio was off and he's trying to call for help. Who knows? But we suspect maybe he shot, he knows he shot, potentially shot very badly, and now maybe he's trying to call um, his significant other or a kid or some loved one uh, to say goodbye, thinking he's about to die. We don't know what's in his head at this moment, but um, I think the key here is you're in a gunfight, be in the gunfight, be present in this moment, be in the gunfight and make it through the gunfight uh, to give yourself a chance to say hello and not goodbye to your loved one. Yeah, and, and this is part of living a life of spiritual fitness, right? That, that you need to, to start every day knowing that you've lived a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent life, knowing that you've been a benefit in your community, that your spouse, that your loved ones, know that you love them, that you've solved every conflict that you can, and that you and Jesus have a strong relationship because you may not get opportunities to do that and, and grabbing that phone to say, man, I need to say some things, that's a good reminder to all of us that you need to do that every day and say those things now rather than wait to where you think it's your last day. Also, man, you need to be in the gunfight right now. You need to be winning this gunfight if at all possible, or at least doing something to take care of the injuries that you have. People do all kinds of crazy things, not giving this officer any hard time whatsoever, but that, that, that capacity of emotional fitness that says, what do I need to be doing right now in order to better my position to live through this is where your priority needs to be. Now, she's already handled her business at this point. The, the female officer has. So she's got this guy down, he's done, whatever. But, but we're gonna talk in just a little bit about that idea of what are we doing in this moment. Now, when she starts seeing this guy shooting at her partner, I love that her initial response is, hey, I need to get my gun out and get it moving. 
And, and the interesting thing to me here, Mike, she ends up hitting him four times. Now we recognize that shots in the thoracic cavity, shots to the body, start a timer, right? They start that, that, hey, wait a minute, I'm starting to lose blood, it hurts, it's gonna get away from me. But shots in the cranial vault are fight stoppers. They shut off the electrical system and not the hydraulic system. And so the problem with them, of course, is that they're much harder to hit. That's a much smaller target under duress. But boy, when you can get one, what we see here is absolutely true. They're fight stoppers. Yeah, they are. Important note here, John. I had a good friend, uh, Jeff. He was on the podcast. Uh, he was a um, special response team, still is actually, for the federal agency I used to work for. They had a shootout with a guy with an AK pattern rifle who was definitely trying to kill. He was not trying to commit suicide. He's trying to murder these agents and get away. And they hit him just above the brow, just above the brow. And if you hit somebody with pistol ammo just above the brow, it's probably 70 30 that it's going to zip right around their scalp and come out the other side and not penetrate. So it, there really is like a triangle under the brow uh, with the pointy end being around the mouth. If you if you miss that, you may or may not have the, the intended effect. I want to point out, she responded, I mean, lightning fast, and that was not a close shot. She was, I don't know how far she was, but she was far enough away that it was a difficult shot to make. And she got her she got her gun out and went to work very quickly to be, to be commended for that. Now, let's talk about this follow-up. I don't think this is something we train for, right? You don't train for a down and disabled officer and a down suspect. You train for a down and disabled officer with a suspect who's still up and trying to kill you and your and your fellow officers. So I think here she she did what she thought was the right thing in the moment, and I'm not definitely not criticizing her, but I think in this moment we need to consider, okay, this guy appears to be down and out. Let me run up to this guy right now and and make sure he is. And I don't I don't mean shoot him again. I mean let's go make sure he is uh, out of the commission, place him in custody, and neutralize him as a consideration at all. And then get your partner the help that he needs, or drag your partner behind the car, or whatever. Um, because normally we don't we preach, hey, hold on the guy until there's help. Take your time getting the bad guy. This is the exception to that, I think. It is the exception to that effect. And, and and listen, having just handled all the business she's gonna handle, I have nothing but admiration for this officer. I think she did an incredible job. Now, right now though, her partner is shot and she needs to, to, to really be getting to that guy. Thankfully, backup is not a long way away. They're able to handle that guy. But this is that one thing, you gotta either get into that perp and make sure that he's out of the fight, kick that gun out of the way or take it into custody so that you can go help your partner. You know, you got to keep doing something, and this is that rare occurrence that it's not. All things considered, I think the female officer here really, really handled her business. Tough situation to be in. Glad the officer is going to be okay. Thank God she was there to cover everyone's ASP.